Hey everybody, it's Thursday, April 7th. So you know what that means. It's time for another episode of the Mortgage Minute. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Mark Lima with the Lima Real Estate Group, here with my preferred lender, Justin from Arbor Financial Group. And just like we always do, we're going to kind of give you the lowdown on what's going on in the mortgage world for the last week, and then uh, give you a little takeaway tidbit of knowledge to take with you. So go ahead, Justin. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this week's episode. So as always, we want to touch on interest rates. And unfortunately, rates are, are going back up. So they've gone up a few times this week alone uh, due to a, a meeting that the Fed's had on Monday of this week. So what I'll leave everyone with is, is rates are increasing. There's no doubt about it. Um, the feds are going to meet six more times throughout the rest of this year. And each time they meet, the rates are expected to go back up. So rates are going to continue going up, at least as far as we th see through the end of the year. On that note is, you know, sometimes when the market is changing, rates increasing, you have to get creative with your financing. So what a lot of buyers are doing now is the adjustable rate loans or arms as they're called, they're coming back into fashion. So the adjustable rate, rate loans typically have a lower rate. Uh, some buyers are doing interest only payments where they're just making the interest payment on the loan. And then also buy downs where basically they're paying points or discount points to buy down their rate for typically a two year period. So when rates go up, don't stress out, don't freak out. It is what it is. We can't control it. You just have to get creative with your financing to make it work for you. Awesome. Not, not the news we were hoping for, but uh, it's very important to put it in perspective that even with interest rates going up, if you look at it from a historical norms perspective, we are still historically low uh, in terms of interest rate, as opposed to, uh, you know, something seven, eight, even higher, you know, as it was back in the day. So, um, and uh, this week's topic that we're going to kind of cover for you guys is um, an appraisal gap and appraisal gap insurance and what that is and how that can help. And, where, and how that applies to you. So go ahead, Justin. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, one of the things that's coming in fashion is uh, you probably have heard of other buyers or people you know at work, home, whatever, that are buying houses is waiving their appraisal contingency, uh, appraisal contingency, excuse me, which is a little bit risky. Um, something that's a little less risky is to do an appraisal gap. So to put it simple is if you're writing an offer on a house and let's just say, uh, you put in the your offer that you're going to give up to a $30,000 appraisal gap. What that means in simple terms is let's say the value of the house comes in $50,000 below the price that you went at is what you can do is instead of having to pay that $50,000 difference between value and price out of pocket is you would be capped at only paying $30,000 difference. So what I can say is I've seen a lot of clients with me and with others in order to get their offers accepted because the market's so competitive, they're putting those appraisal gaps and it's all different amounts, but that's one tactic that's definitely helping get buyers offers accepted. And again, it's just, you have to get creative in the market uh, to sometimes be the winning bid. Awesome. Well, we appreciate the information. Useful as always. So thank you very much. And uh, with that, we will leave you guys to have a wonderful rest of your week. And we will catch up with you again next Thursday for another episode of the Mortgage Minute. Have a wonderful day. Take it easy.